And we ended on uh, Hasad, right? So Hasad is is yeah yeah. This is an updated version here. So the Arabic's not on that first part because you already have it on the other part. But you can just make the changes as necessary. Can the people who are registered in the class take because we like forty people? Hasad uh, is a probably one of the most serious diseases. Again, because you have a difference of opinion about the diseases and the root disease, some say Hasad is the root disease. But again, uh, I think it will always go back to Hama because desire in Hasad there's always desire. So really, it's going to go back to uh, Hama. Or Hubr Riyasa, like Ibn Ashr says, because... But then even Ibn Ashr admits, you know, that the source of all wrong is Hubb al-Ajila. Which again, love of the world is related to desire. Hasad, according to the ulama, is the first disease... Uh, it, it is the first manifestation of wrong uh, in the heavens. So, أول ما عصي به الله في السماء الحسد. The first thing that Allah was disobeyed within the heaven was Hasad. Because Iblis, nothing prevented him from bowing down except for Hasad. And it's a Hasad that's called Ta'azuz, which he'll go into. He, 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 he couldn't stand that Adam السلام, would have a higher position than him. That he couldn't stand that. Or Hasad al takabbur it's related to his own pride. It's takbara. He was, he was arrogant and full of pride. So, now there's a hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ said that Hasad will eat good deeds like the fire eats wood, which is really important because if you've ever seen fire eat dry wood, Right? It should let you know what happens to the hasanat. And so they say the hasid, who is the person who actually has envy, and, the, and his object of envy is called mahsud. Right? And we, we, sh- we should know this, the hasid in the verse of Quran, that people should memorize, wa hasidin idha hasad. Right? Wa hasidin idha hasad. Uh, hasid is shaitan, is al-hasid. And so to have envy is to manifest one of the attributes of shaitan. And there's a hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ said, Every uh, possessor of a blessing, any blessing, is envied. So there's always going to be somebody that envies you if you have a blessing. Two people, street sweepers. One of them has a cart that he has to pull and he's got all his brooms and everything on it. The other street sweeper has a donkey that pulls his cart. For you, totally insignificant. For the one without the donkey, he looks at the one uh, with the donkey and he envies him. So it doesn't matter what level it's happening, envy is a very strange thing and it permeates human culture and society. And... It's also believed that envy has a harm. There's a madarra related to envy. But it's said that the one envying, his envy harms him before it harms the object of his envy. So he's harmed by it 
faster than he can harm the object of his envy. Although the evil eye is generally related to envy, it doesn't have to be. Some people just have the, the eye. It's some type of psychic power that some people have. So it, it doesn't have to be that they envy, although it, it's dangerous. Like traditionally in a lot of Muslim cultures, a firstborn male, they used to pierce their ears and dress them as little girls for the first five years. <laughs> I mean, really, they did that. It's very common. And I knew somebody, this older man, who had holes in his ears, and I asked him about it, and that's what happened. So people were very fearful of these things. Now, obviously, in Western culture, most of this stuff is seen now as kind of superstitious. Uh, it's interesting that every culture has a concept of the evil eye. Every culture. European cultures... I mean, uh, invidious, which means to envy, means to look with evil, right? The evil eye, it's an evil glance, right? Uh, the, uh, the Chinese have an evil, and they do a lot of ritual to prevent the evil eye from afflicting their houses. You'll see mirrors on Chinese houses often, and it's to deflect the evil eye. So it's a universal belief. It's not limited to Islam. People, uh, and generally when you have universal beliefs, there's a foundation for it. It's not an imaginary type thing. Although, the anthropologist would say, uh, you know, things happen to people, right? And they don't know why it happens, so the way that they explain it is things like he got afflicted with the eye. In other words, it becomes a kind of easy way of explaining the inexplicable. Right? So you do get situations where people will attribute something to the eye simply because they can't... Like somebody gets sick and you don't know why they... You know, they're just sick and you look and all these different... Nobody can understand why. They'll say, oh, it might be the eye. Musab bil ain. So... Uh, there's a hadith al ain wa haq. The evil eye is true. And the Prophet, if you look at him, he was somebody that was very much engaged in getting rid of superstition. Right? I mean, when the moon eclipsed, the Arabs believed that if a moon eclipsed, it meant a great person died. And it eclipsed the, the day that his son died, Ibrahim. The moon eclipsed. It was a perfect opportunity for somebody who was a charlatan to get a lot of... Uh, and people actually became Muslim that day because they said, it, you know, the moon eclipsed for his son. He went out, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and announced to the people, the moon is a sign of Allah, the sun is a sign of Allah, and they don't eclipse for anyone. So he dispelled that superstition. So part of his teaching was really to dispel superstition. So when, when he said, al aynu haqqun, and it's a sahih hadith, uh, he, he, what, he's telling us that there's something real in the world called the evil eye and, and people should take it seriously. It's not a joke. And in, in English you say, if looks could kill, right? People have a sense of when somebody's looking at them and there's psychic power with looks, you know? So anyway, uh, the, the hadith says that that Hasad um, will eat Ya'kuru al-Hasanat Kama ta'kuru al-Nar al hatab Just like fire eats dry wood. And the reason for that is is because when you have Hasad and he explains it here, right? He said وَرْسِمْ بِحُبِّكَ زَوَادَ النِّعْمَ عَنْ غَيْرِكَ الْحَسَدَ تُحْسِنْ رَسْمَ Describe your desire for someone's loss of their blessing as envy, and you'll have correctly described it. So, if you desire somebody to lose a blessing that they have, that means that you're envious. It could be anything. It could be a house, a car, a job. Somebody got a promotion over you, and you wish they lose their job. They do a bad uh, uh, job, so they get fired, and you get the position. Or just so they get fired. Uh, somebody gets, uh, you know, has... Uh, uh, a husband uh, that, that you envy and you wish you don't think she deserves him and you wish she got lost her husband. 
or uh, a wife, something like that, these type things. Envy is, is many, many variations of it, but ultimately it's the idea of loss of ni'mah. And a ni'mah, which comes from an Arabic word, uh, na'ima, which has to do with softness. It's the opposite of difficulty, right? Softness. So ni'ma are things that make life easier, is a ni'ma. Now obviously there could be a ni'ma hidden in a ni'ma, and a ni'ma hidden in a ni'ma. And they say it's a blessing in disguise, right? In this culture, in English we say it's a blessing in disguise. In other words, you don't see the blessing, but it's there. Every cloud has a silver lining, these type things. Indicate you have to be careful with what's a blessing and what's not a blessing. So a ni'mah is something that Allah gives and Allah's name is al-mun'im. He's the giver of ni'mah. If Allah gives a person a blessing and you wish they lose that blessing, what you're basically saying is Allah was wrong to give that blessing to that person. In other, in other words, you are judging Allah's wisdom in, in placing a blessing with somebody else. And one of my favorite stories is, and some people heard this, but Al Asma'i, he, he, he used to travel all these desert camps to collect words and things. And he was at one uh, Bedouin's uh, tent. And the Bedouin, the women come in, serve and, and sit. It's part of Bedouin culture then and now. And uh, this man had a very beautiful wife and he was incredibly ugly. And... Uh, when the man went out to like sacrifice the sheep for al asmai he couldn't resist saying to this woman, how did you end up with this? How did such a beautiful woman like you end up with such an ugly man like that? And, and the woman said to al asmai and al asmai he's relating the story, so he's that type of person. He, uh, the woman said to him, Taqillah, you know, have taqwa of Allah, fear of Allah. She said, La'alli... Maybe he did good things with his Lord and I'm his reward. Or maybe I did some bad things and he's my punishment. <laughs> so the point being, Al Asma'i was saying, you know, Allah has a hikmah and you don't know what the hikmah is. So you have to be very careful when you uh, are looking, what's that doing there? Or why is that person with that person? Or, right? So, uh, Allah is al-mun'im. He's the giver of blessing. And if you question the ni'mah, uh, then you're questioning the giver of the ni'mah. And that's why Allah hates it. And that's why uh, shaitan was disobedient to Allah. And the difference between shaitan and Adam, alayhi salam, is Adam... When he made his mistake, he made tawbah, and the hasud doesn't make tawbah. The hasud is unable, because part of his problem is kibbah. Right? He, he doesn't feel somebody's worthy, and he's worthy. That's takabbur. I'm better than him. He doesn't deserve what he has. And that type of person, they can't make tawbah. It's hard for them to admit they're wrong, so they don't, they don't turn away from their hasad. Right? They don't actually turn away from it. So, then